Hello YouTube, I am back. I know things have been quiet around here and that's because it was a really crazy busy summer. I was teaching cooking camps and traveling like a lot, which basically left absolutely no time for videos. Let's see, we went to California, Colorado, Belgium and France. Yes, it was wonderful, especially France. But I'm not here to tell you romantic stories about French countryside today. I am here to talk to you about my cookware discoveries in Colorado. You didn't think people go to Colorado to learn about cookware, now did you? Let me explain. The reason I learn something interesting every time I go to Colorado is because that's where my brother, Leo, lives. Leo is the only person I know who is not at all shy about having me in his kitchen. Most people are like, oh no, I can't possibly cook for you, nothing I'll cook will be gourmet enough. Or if they have me over, they refuse to let me help. Leo has none of those qualms. He just goes, okay, Helen, three onions, sliced, please. Taste this, does it need more salt? I love it. <laughs> anyway, a lucky side effect of spending a few days cooking with Leo is that I get to learn about you and your kitchens. The kitchens of people who watch my videos and use my recipes and equipment recommendations. And here's what I've learned this year. First, let's talk about Missin. By now, you know how much I love my Missin chef's knife and it will come as no surprise to anyone that Leo has one too. After all, both Leo and I are big fans of SeriousEats.com and if Kenji Alt is head over heels about something, we absolutely must try it. Leo is very happy with his Missin chef's knife but it turned out that it's not exactly the same knife that I have. The difference is in the transition from the blade to the handle, this spot right here. It's not as smooth and polished as it is on my knife. For me, the original smoother handle is way more comfortable. I don't know when Missin made this change. The knife I have was their first ever shipment, which was in 2016, and Leo's knife is probably from 2018. Why would such a change be made? I don't know. So what I'm about to say is pure speculation. It probably makes the knife cheaper to manufacture. $65 is an amazing deal for this kind of knife. And I appreciate the fact that Missin wants to make affordable kitchen equipment, but I would gladly pay extra $10 to get a more comfortable grip. I mean, how often do you buy a knife, right? Maybe once every 10 years? What's $10 over 10 years? I'm curious if anyone out there had the chance to compare the original Missin handle design and the current one. What did you think? If you have the current version of the knife and you use a pinch grip, how is it? It could be that I'm making a mountain out of a molehill here, but since this change just slipped in there, I thought that someone should start a discussion about it. Don't get me wrong. If I had to buy a knife now, I would still buy a Missin. Even with the current handle design, it's still my favorite knife on the market. My second Colorado equipment discovery was about the instant pot. Leo wanted to make sushi and he put me in charge of rice. He was planning to use my old sushi rice recipe that simulates a rice cooker using the oven. That's how I did it before I got the instant pot. And guess what I noticed sitting in the corner on Leo's counter? <laughs> That's right instant pot. So I asked if I could use it. Leo goes, what? Sushi rice in the instant pot? And I go, yeah, it's going to be great. I do this at home all the time. I even have a video coming out about how awesome the instant pot is for making rice. I mean, it's totally foolproof. You press the rice button and voila, perfect rice every time. So Leo goes, okay, let's give it a go. But if it doesn't work out, I'll leave your video a bad review. <laughs> nah, 
he was just kidding. Though, who knows, maybe that review is still coming. <laughs> Leo's Instant Pot looked a little different from mine. I've had mine for a while, so I thought maybe they changed the interface a little. I assembled the rice, pressed the rice button, and the screen said 10 minutes. That made me a little uneasy since my pot says 12 minutes. But I thought, ah, okay, let's give it a go. The good news was that the rice was usable. A bit mushy and a bit stuck to the bottom of the pot, but usable. If this was my first experience with rice in the Instant Pot, I would wonder what the hype was about. This was by no stretch of imagination perfect rice. The mushiness and stickiness to the bottom of the pot were surprising, since the cooking time was shorter than for my pot at home. If anything, I was expecting slightly undercooked rice. So since I'm the kind of person who can't let go of a, any cooking mystery, <laughs> I pulled out the Instant Pot manual and started reading. Turned out Leo's model of the Instant Pot had no low pressure. That's why the time was shorter. The rice setting on my Instant Pot does 12 minutes on low pressure and Leo's does 10 minutes on high pressure, which is way too long. Five minutes on high pressure would be more than plenty, though high pressure is not ideal for cooking sushi rice. Now, you're probably wondering which model of Instant Pot this is so that you know what not to buy. It's called Lux, and as I later found out, it's the only Instant Pot model without low pressure, or at least it is at the moment, because in the world of cooking equipment, things can change anytime. <laughs> cooking equipment and reviews of cooking equipment have become completely disposable. I don't mean to get all nostalgic about the good old days, but you know, it's just the reality and it has its pros and it has its cons. I am glad that we can buy cheap immersion circulators, electric pressure cookers and other equipment. I am glad that young people don't need to wait as long to get their kitchens equipped. And I'm glad that there is so much innovation in the field of cooking equipment. But I'm sad that making purchasing decisions is harder than ever. You have to take all reviews, including mine, with a grain of salt. I try my best not to review anything until I've used it for years or at least many months. I don't accept any free products for review. Everything I talk about on this channel was bought with my own money. And in spite of all these efforts, I never know if the product you'll buy will be the same as the product I bought a year ago. Will it work as well? Will it last as long? There is no way of knowing. Thank you so much to Leo for helping me collect real world data on cooking equipment. Next week, we are going to talk about missing nonstick pans. I only bought mine six months ago. Normally, I'd wait longer before reviewing a cooking product, but they'll probably completely change them by then. So I thought I should hurry up and tell you what I know so far. Here are more thought-provoking culinary videos for you to check out. And if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.